Good morning to the Honorable Prime Minister, members of the media, radio listeners via St. Martin of Radio 107.9 FM, Telems Tell TV Plus Channel 15, respective radio stations island wide, and online viewers. I'm Rolika Roach and welcome to the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. At this time, I would like to invite the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, Severa Jacobs, to address you. Prime Minister Jacobs, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Rolika. Good morning to you. Good morning to uh, my colleagues here in the building, as well as to the media presence and the Department of Communications. Good morning to the people of St. Martin. It's always a pleasure to be back in this room to be able to update. And this week has been an exercise in thankfulness, in gratitude, and in blessings as we move forward from the minimal effects faced here on St. Martin as a result of the passage of Hurricane Tammy. I'm thankful to the people of St. Martin for adhering to the warnings that were put out by the Emergency Operations Center, EOC, which was activated over the weekend and was deactivated on Monday. The individual emergency support functions, ESFs, were able to carry out the necessary checks and balances to be able to be prepared to function during as well as after the passage of the hurricane to be able to put steps in place to ensure the protection of St. Martin and her people. To those members of the Emergency Operations Center, I want to say a deep word of gratitude for your year-round preparations, being able to face what you faced with your teams. And many may think that it is just a 10 persons that represent the ESFs, but there are actually big teams behind each person. And so there's work that's ongoing, trainings that are ongoing, and even as yesterday, um, not necessarily planned to happen right after the hurricane's passing, but was already in the planning, the EOC had its retreat where they uh, were busy with corporate governance trainings, as well as other ways and means to make our work more efficient and effective which took place yesterday. So thank you for all that you're doing and continue to do, especially in your day-to-day -day as well while um, preparing for any eventuality. At St. Martin, we are not yet out of the woods. The hurricane season is still ongoing. And seeing that it has actually been warmer this year, we can ex probably expect that we may have conditions past the official end as well. Uh, we continue to be grateful and prepare for any eventuality. We also pray for the families. We've seen quite a few death announcements over the past week. So we pray for those families dealing with the loss. Our former colleague here in the Ministry of Finance, Ms. Ivy Tillman, came as a big shock for many. And we do wish the family, friends, loved ones, colleagues here in government much strength as we deal with this loss. Of course, uh, in general, we're dealing with mental health awareness. We are bringing more awareness, but the reality is no one knows what others are going through. So do not give up. Continue to uh, empower yourselves with information. Get the necessary counseling. There are many, many avenues by which this can be done uh, through the schools, through student support services, counselors at the schools, as well as the Organization for Psychologists, APAP, which is registered, and you can find links to them online. The Civil Registry would also like to update that on last Saturday, actually, though we had initially canceled the walk-in, once business closures were lifted on Saturday morning, uh, they did also reopen their doors, their doors and were able to serve persons on Saturday, October 21st. That will continue this Saturday, October 28th. Um, walking service for driver's license renewals at the Government Administration Building from 9 to 12 noon. It will also take place on November 4th and November 18th for the renewal of ID cards, and that is specifically to ensure that persons have valid IDs to be able to cast their votes um, when the election rolls around. So no uh, appointments are needed for these walk-ins. This Saturday, the 28th of October, for driver's license, and next week, Saturday, the 4th of Oct uh, November, and uh, two weeks after that, the 18th of November, you will be able to renew your ID cards without any appointments. 
of course, pay attention to what you need to bring and ensure that that is done in a timely fashion. 9 to 12 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Also, as it relates to civil registry, um, amid some erroneous statements being made um, and attacks on actual civil servants working in the department, I would like to inform the following. It is standard procedure that third parties, specifically lawyers, can request a registration form from the civil registry department as it relates to a court case in order to be able to issue a summons. So this is, this is according to the articles within the laws that regulate the basic administration. You can go to our sites, you can check those out. And so while any party can just walk in and demand to know your address, if it relates to a court case, the court and or the lawyers can request that information. And this is nothing that is in the purview of any minister. The request goes and it's standard procedure. So just to clarify that, because it is very unfortunate that we say we are for the promotion of our young people. Young people get jobs within the government of St. Martin and then run the risk of being dragged in the public domain for things that are their job. They have to do their jobs. And that is what they're doing to the best of their ability. So I thank the civil servants who continue to do that despite the challenges that we currently face. The corporate governance training continues uh, throughout government. Uh, we have had a cohort of young professionals that had gone to a training um, later today. A new cohort will be starting of trainees for the corporate governance training program. And this week, the Council of Ministers has also started its own training program. So we are, as shareholders, also getting more information to be able to execute our functions at the highest possible level. Yesterday, the Council of Ministers were also in a meeting with the CFT. The CFT is currently doing its rounds, and we were updated on uh, their report, their recommendations, and had a very interesting discussion wherein I was able to bring forth the need for us as uh, small island developing states, our stakeholders within the kingdom, as well as um, any institution that would be able to give loans, in the case of Aruba, that's third parties as well, whereby um, we look at the other vulnerabilities that we face as SIDS. So they are willing to look at that. Uh, we're going to give more information on that, which is called the MVI. The United Nations most recently issued a report on this, and so this can be found on the United Nations website as well. MVIs are multidimensional vulnerability index, and it is used in addition to the usual GDPs or um, other indexes to determine a country, how much debt it can go in, etc. So they look at more vulnerabilities than just what your GDP is. And for us as small island developing states, it's important because it truly speaks to how much debt should there be. And it would then give even more arguments in the positive for St. Martin and other small island states, for instance, for loans that we have had to most recently um, update regarding COVID. So this was a disaster, we need to invest more, was also stated, and to be able to do that, you have to, you have, to have liquidity free or qualify for loans. So we would prefer to then be able to get the capital expenditures, which for the first time in several years, we do have for 2023, to make the necessary upgrades in our infrastructure and other areas within government. The Plastic Free St. Martin, is still having its call for a statistical consultant to, uh, with expertise in data collection to contribute to a comprehensive report analyzing the import, usage, and sentiments regarding single-use plastic and polystyrene foam products. As you know, I have been on like the campaign to ensure that government uh, does what it does internally. There needs to be more collaboration, of course, between various ministries to get the legislation enacted. We do want to work towards that, but in the meantime, individually, as citizens of St. Martin, we all have a role to play. Minimize your use of plastic, single-use plastic especially, and styrofoam. Um, also, do more reusables, reduce your garbage. 
refuse to use certain things that we know harms our environment. And on that note, I want to, if with your indulgence, go into what happened in preparation for the storm where garbage collection is concerned. Um, a very clear announcement was made by the Ministry of Vromi as to when collections would take place. They happened for the most part, and then persons still came out and threw more garbage into the bins. Now, the risk with a serious hurricane and or rains would mean that these things would end up going into the gutters, into the sea, and therefore harm the animals that we, in turn, will catch, eat, and get into our own systems. So we must also think on what our actions are doing to influence our environment. Um, it is government's priority. It is the NGOs and the CSOs who are on the ground, Epic, Pride, um, Nature Foundation. They've been doing a great job, and we're seeing more awareness within the community. So I implore you, please, reduce, reuse, recycle, upcycle, donate, give to the Freegan Foods and the other organizations that are actually putting them to good use instead of putting more garbage on the dump that can be used, for instance, or is harmful to our environment. So with that being said, um, for that uh, statistical consultant, please uh, send your application to smdf.sx slash procurement, and the deadline for submission is November 1st, and the email is info at smdf.sx, info at smdf.sx. And that is all I have for now. Thank you, Orlaika, and welcome to our Minister of Justice. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs, for your opening remarks. At this time, I would like to invite the Honorable Minister of Justice, Anna Richardson, to address you. Minister Richardson, you have the floor. Thank you. Pleasant good morning to our viewers, those that are listening via radio. Um, welcome and good morning to Prime Minister. Excuse me for my voice. It's a little bit under the weather. <laughs> um, just two short announcements. Um, one is that I want to bring it to the public's attention that CAPSM has began with towing of vehicles that are illegally parked and violating um, the rules on Front Street. It will happen as well on the boardwalk. Um, it's for quite some time now. We have been uh, asking persons not to park illegally on Front Street and other areas within Phillipsburg. Um, but that has not been adhered to, so I believe that the publication yesterday gave confirmation that this has begun, um, and it, it should be very consistent. Um, so congratulations and thank you to KPSM for um, taking action. Uh, and lastly, I want to invite the public to the Port of St. Martin this Saturday. We have a justice open house uh, where we're going to have all of our law enforcement agencies uh, there. There are going to be different uh, sorts of demonstration of what justice does. We have tents for all of our uh, different departments and agencies where you can ask questions and get familiar with, um, you know, if you want to be able to take a career in justice, what that would entail. So um, we have a fun area for kids as well. There is, I believe, an eatery section, but it's going to be quite entertaining. So we want to be able to have uh, as much of our population to come out and, and engage with us. And those are my opening statements. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Richardson, for your opening remarks. If you've just joined us, you are watching the live Council Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. We now move on to the question and answer session. Bibi Hodge Shaw of SMN News, you have the floor. Good morning. Thank you, Alaika. Good morning, colleague, and good morning, ministers. My question, I'll start with the Minister of Justice today. Um, Minister, there are reports that students uh, are using the library as a place to conduct sexual activities. These are reports coming from KPSM, and I do not know if you are aware of this, and what is government doing about this uh, building that is supposed to be demolished quite a while now? Um, I think that question is really, okay, so well, to me, it's a two-part question. One is, what is the status with the, the, and you're speaking of the old library, I would assume. Um, I believe Prime Minister has way more information in terms of NRPB and Vromi, et cetera, um, with that. 
But if you were to focus on the acts that of the students, um, you know, BB, to be quite honest with you, I, I think that especially if uh, these children are caught, their parents are contacted, this is a conversation parents have to have with their children. This is not something that is levied on government to have to take care of. Um, I think that the, the, the children would need uh, proper guidance by their parents of what is appropriate and what's not. Um, so in the event that these children um, are known, and CAPSM, for example, I'm sure they've taken the steps to contact their parents. We hear about these types of behaviors taking places on buses, et cetera, in schools, et cetera. So we, we, we kind of, you know, everything doesn't have to be thrown on government. We have layers um, of responsibility, and I think we have to direct these um, calls for proper parenting and proper guidance to be administered on the right levels. Thank you, Minister Richardson. Thank you, Bibi. I would now like to invite Jacqueline Hofman of the Daily Herald. You have the floor. Thank you. Good morning, ministers. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, 10 years ago, a national energy plan was uh, drawn up, um, uh, outlining the strategy for the transition to uh, sustainable energy. And this was a requirement then for to get EU funding. Um, since then, um, government uh, started cooperation with grid market for the energy mix. And uh, yesterday there was a, an ad, an advertorial placed in the newspaper about the investment plan for GB. Uh, could you explain how these different paths align and what the energy mix for um, C. Martin will be? Thank you for that question. Um, yes, indeed. Since 2014, uh, we've had uh, an, uh, the last update or approved update to the energy uh, policy plan was done, which formed part of GEBE's concession moving forward. Um, that plan is currently being updated. I did mention this, I believe, several times in various uh, press briefings. The government of St. Martin, also with EU funds, um, hired the consultant, Grid Market, to prepare a roadmap, which is um, near completion. We could have said it's completed, but it was missing at the time key information from NVGEBE. At this point, they are also in discussions to be able to get that roadmap to fin be finalized. What is also being done at the moment, as you know, via the trust fund, there was a budget set aside to assist GEBE. Uh, one was, part of it was the ERP-1 in terms of the underground and getting us fully underground with our cabling so that we have less uh, shocks and can bounce back quicker. That is still ongoing. But also there was funds set aside for the development of GEBE's strategic and business plan. Um, previous government uh, management didn't make use of it, but since the temporary manager that has been there since last year is there, they have taken up the discussion with the NRPB and the World Bank, and as such, technical assistance is being provided to them via the trust fund for this purpose. And it will align uh, the upgrading of the policy, the roadmap, with their strategic plan. As you know, government sets the cadres, the, the, the direction, and GEBE has to implement. So in this regard, GEBE is um, together with the trust fund, which is government of St. Martin approving these funds to address the most urgent issues for power generation, improvement of the transmission system as well, and the firm will deliver a demand forecasting study, a least cost, power development plan because it is not just to change over to sustainable energy but to ensure that it remains just and affordable for the people of St. Martin and to identify which would be the first renewable projects for GEBE. Now in our first grid market presentation that we had, of course the first phase was solar but it did not, uh, let's say slight, uh, it did not exclude the possibility within the first phase to do more than one thing. So there's a multiple possibilities, GEBE with the finalization of their plan, taking into consideration our uh, roadmap, which they've already agreed to work with, will then be presenting that plan to government for approval and moving forward. And then we'll be able to state what the energy mix would be. Um, St. Martin being in a location that has and waves and wind and solar can have a multi, um, let's say multi, 
multi aspect, I can't even come with it, multifaceted <laughs> approach to the transition to renewable energy. But of course, what we are looking at is like the low hanging fruit, what can be done in the short term um, so that we can ensure that consistency of uh, electricity production is at a high level. So the request for expression of interest for consulting firms has been cleared by the World Bank and will be published or has been published yesterday, October 24th. These activities will run parallel with GB's effort to increase the accurate billing and improve the overall functions of the provision of electricity and water on St. Martin. So this is the approved text that I received from GEB management in anticipation of a question in this regard, but we're very happy that now we're seeing more alignment of government's policy with GEBE strategic planning, which is moving forward. So soon, but very soon, we'll be able to hear what that mix will be. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs. Thank you, Jacqueline. Bibi, we're up, we now move on to the second round. Bibi, you have the floor. Thank you, Rolaika. Uh, Prime Minister, can you provide an update on the critical projects that are being executed by NRPB? Off the top of my head, I can mention uh, we have the Mari Laurent School, the sport facilities, Charles Leopold Bell, and even the library that I just mentioned. <laughs> Yes, and when Minister Justice answered you just now, I was supposed to add to that. Um, yes, I am the minister in charge of the trust fund projects, but I don't have every single project off the top of my head. We receive tons of updates all the time. Um, what I can say is that it remains a priority to get all of those projects that you mentioned. The schools are starting, uh, the rest of the schools that hadn't started yet etc the library as well i can't say specifically where it is but of course the demolition of that building has to take place uh, before they can move forward and i will ensure that we uh, send that out in writing uh, the other projects um, let me see i have a little overview here there are actually a couple of missions which i forgot to mention ongoing in the month of october we have a mission from the World Bank here that was here last week, another one this week, one on housing, um, one on mental health. Um, that were two of the things we approved in the last steering committee. There is an ongoing discussion as to what will happen in the next steering committee in November. Um, and those two were projects that still require still some work to be done, as well as wastewater. NRPB has also updated and the World Bank that as you know, the airport is on track. That's one of the more important ones as well. Um, we have the, which project is this? Library services, restore access to an ad adequate and inclusive learning environment to reestablish library services, improve the availability of quality data, etc. This project is scheduled to close um, it was approved in June 2022, and as of April 2023, 0.54 million has been disbursed um, out of the 26 point something. So there's a lot more to be done still in that project. Um, but we are seeing that they are getting on track. It has the priorities of the Ministry of Education, which has a very good working team with the NRPB and the World Bank. And I will ask the minister to update specifically to the Foster Resiliency Learning Project, as well as the library, including the library, schools, sports facilities as well. But I know that they're well on the way. And outside of that, the capital investments also has an injection for some of the sports facilities, um, schools, as well as infrastructure for roads, et cetera. So a lot of persons have been asking over the time, and the CFT as well, not enough investments, et cetera. Now we have the access to the funds and the trust fund money is there, but the process is what it is and requires several social and environmental checks to be done before the actual approvals by the World Bank to get them executed. So we look forward to the Ministry of Education's management information system also being finalized and project management, financial management, and environmental and social uh, safeguards being added to all projects. That's the update for now. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs, and thank you, Bibi. As we only have five more minutes left for this broadcast, I will allow Jacqueline Hoffman to give the final question. Jacqueline, you have the floor. Thank you. 
uh, Prime Minister, um, how much has government paid to grid market and uh, the strategic financial support? Uh, it doesn't mention in this advertorial uh, how much is that um, for the uh, for GB. Thank you for the question. Um, I'll be able to send that information for you in writing. As I mentioned to you before, it was EU funding that was used via Resembit, I believe, to fund the project of creating the roadmap via uh, grid market. And GEBE's current trajectory with the World Bank, it's clearly established within all of the plans that were approved and published in the last update, so you can find that online. And if not, then we will ensure to state what is available. I believe it's a half a million available to be able to execute the strategic and business plan of GEBE. But we can verify that by just going back to the NRPB, looking under the ERP1 where it states GEBE project. Thank you, Prime Minister. Okay, we will go one more round. Bibi, you have the floor. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, can you tell us if the government have a contingency plan in place in the event APS fail to meet its financial its obligations. Recently, we've been seeing APS. Yes, they have been having a lot of uh, issues uh, regarding financial issues. And what I'm asking, is there a contingency plan in place in the event APS fail to meet its, its obligation? I will have to take that uh, question back uh, to the Ministry of Finance and APS to be able to answer that. We have not been updated that officially that they have this challenge, so this is something that we will have to do some research on. Thank you, Prime Minister. Jacqueline? Thank you. Uh, Prime Minister, the National Energy Plan outlined the transition to LNG for cleaner energy pr electricity production and lower cost for the customers. Um, the Minister of Tea had visited Crowley in Puerto Rico with a delegation. Um, is this uh, cooperation and uh, their offer of a transshipment port, um, is that in uh, consideration? What is your answer to Crowley? Okay, so as a Council of Ministers, also of course leaning on the minister that has the, uh, you know, we have very distinct roles. So you can look at it from a shareholder perspective, but also from a regulator perspective, and the Ministry of Tayat as well as Vrami is involved in that. So we would, I would prefer, as it respond, as it relates to a response to Crowley, that we have uh, their input for a final discussion and or response to be put in writing. As it relates to LNG, I don't know if you're aware, but all of the last engines that have been bought by NVGEBE have had dual capacity. So. Uh, oil as well as the possibility to run on LNG. So knowing that this was part of the policy since 2014 to look for more uh, other resources other than oil uh, to make it a cleaner um, energy production, these, the last, the newest of the engines all have the capacity to also run on LNG. So it is one of the possibilities in the transition or in the interim towards a transition to uh, renewable energy. So it remains there as one of the options. Thank you, Prime Minister Jacobs. Thank you, members of the media. This does bring us to the end of the question and answer session. Any further questions can be sent to the minister's cabinet in writing. Honorable ministers of the council, members of the media, radio listening and online viewers, this brings us to the end of the live council of ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. For rebroadcast, tune into stmartingov.org. SXM Gov Radio via 107.9 FM, Telem Cell TV Plus Channel 15, the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin, and YouTube channel Government of St. Martin. For video on demand, log on to the Government of St. Martin's YouTube channel. On behalf of the Government of St. Martin and the Department of Communication, I'm Rolai Karoch and wishing you a pleasant day further.